All right. We are going to take you to... Where do you want to go? Where, where do I want to go? Take me? It doesn't matter because I'm not going to win. It does... Yeah. Creativity, you it. know what? Let's take you to a little bit of... Um, well, I got high creativity and high uh, I guess... Uh, <laughs> take me wherever you want. We're going to go to fun. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain plus two fun. Everyone's favorite eldritch cutie, Patootie, runs up to you, tentacles twitching with excitement. Oh no. That's you. Did you hear? Did you hear? Oh no. Netflix is rebooting. Senior regular Samurai Frogs. I'm so excited. Like, oh my god. Uh, oh my god is right. Oh miserable gods of TV. Why do you keep doing this to us? They're going to ruin SRSF for the next generation. F off. Just like when the SJWs hacked human hunters and they made up that all-female reboot and now young monsters will grow up watching that never know to happiness. Wow. Netflix already ruined State of Cats from Venus and Ghetto Dolphins. Now they're going to ruin the frogs too? I bet they're all going to be POC and women anyways. Wow. They probably won't even be frogs. Wow. Um, I don't know know that they are making them gay and women, but even if they were, aren't they gay and or female frogs? Ah, you would say that. But aren't there? I'm so confused all the time, Litter. Why are you like this? <laughs> At that moment, a middle-aged man pops out from behind you with what now no which behind what you now notice is a cardboard cutout of a bush clearly planted there for eavesdropping. Well, hello there, representatives of our sweet, sweet target demographic, he says. I couldn't help but overhear you six such Sushin. Thank you. <laughs> Encapsulating like, yeah. a generic argument about reboots. We've indeed feared just such backlash from you whippersnappers. Tell me, do any of you have ideas for how we can guarantee this reboot will be a success? I bet it would absolutely impress any classmate you wish to romance. Impressing classmates you wish to romance? Holy shit, that's like your whole thing. Plus you can't possibly let Leonard chime in, so... Well, people might criticize, well, well, okay, well, people might criticize new graphic style, new characters, new voice actors, new, wait, what if you just air the same show from 30 years ago, but with a new name, or add a hip new character to hook the target demo, like a surfer skater dog with a goatee and super cool sunglasses or something. Oh dear. I think you're going to lose either. Which one do you want to go for? Mmm, go for the one that you think I'm probably not gonna lose the most of. If that's smart and that's fine, you lose all of it, but maybe Boy. this. Let's just go with it. The the super cool character. You got it, it was creative. Aww. Yes, of course. When adding new characters, there's always a danger of facing criticism unless the character is just so, so awesome. Your turn. Oh, oh, what if you had? <laughs> A rabbit with a beard and tattoos who is also a motorcycle! Perfect! And he can have a PhD in selfies and kill any industry with a snap of his fingers, just like a true millennial. Plus, he's the national champion of dabbing. Are you kidding? This sounds like some pandering bullshit! And I would consider your input valuable, but that purple chick pitched it in such a calm and even-killed way that she must be right. I gotta get this to the art department right now. And by the art department, I just mean my friend Art. He draws things. His name is a mere coincidence. Goodbye, sweet, sweet target demographic. Ashley. I can't believe I designed a character for <laughs> him and animated his eyes. I can't believe he has a PhD in selfies. You can't believe it's not butter. 
Just kidding. Do you believe we've all with the spooky high as weird as possible? I can't today? believe it's not butter. <laughs> no, Let's right. go. Okay, the last one, and then we get to do our prom. <laughs> we are gonna go where? Where's my phone? Your phone is somewhere over here. Can I message somebody that's not gonna ever respond back to me? Because After the game. Only if you can finish this game. Only if I can finish this game! Yeah, <laughs> so let's see. We're gonna go to Charm. The day of the Godfall match takes place amidst the battle, you spot a fellow player that seems utterly discouraged. She thinks she's not worth anything at dodgeball, and she attempts to throw balls at herself. You explain to her the many ways you think she's unique and wonderful, while also defending the many pleasures in life. With your help, she's capable of finding reasons to keep playing and gains a sense of self-worth. You gain plus one BFF. Sadly, she's not a part of this game, so the beautiful friendship will take place off-screen. And plus two charm. You turn around to find Vera staring at you. This often happens, but for some reason it's not a death stare this time. She actually looks kind of happy to see you. Weird. You decide to do what you do best. Push your luck. Finally. If you'd taken any longer to come over here, to, or to come over, I would have had to have my minions drag you here. Listen. My date for tonight was unexpectedly eaten by vultures. Totally not my fault. Anyway, I need to fill the slots somehow, and I thought maybe you could recommend one of your more attractive friends. <laughs> uh, just kidding, darling. You're not half bad. But seriously, meet me at the Thousand Arms at 9.15pm or the vultures will eat twice today. Did, did Vera just ask you on a date? She did. This is like Christmas in whatever damn month, damn month it is right now. But if you don't want this to be more than just a one-time thing, you'd best come up with an incredible dinner gift to win her over. A magic mirror that will always tell her how fabulous she looks. Oh, that's charming. And the head of her greatest enemy. Ooh. Wow. Might be bold. I feel like this one. Um, your sets are so much better than mine. <laughs> Wealthy! Damn. Okay, you my wealth is better than <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's the only thing that's good. Uh, you hop on over to ye old magic mirror shop and pick out their choicest product, the flatterizer. Wow. All right, that's funny. Not only does this thing actually uh, pay compliments, it also GPS locates prettier people so you can have them kidnapped slash executed at your convenience. You presented to Vera at dinner with a dramatic flourish. Her eyes and the eyes of all her snakes light up. Oh, you shouldn't have. Literally, you shouldn't have, because now you're an accessory to all the killings I'm going to order with this thing. She's technically right about that, but luckily she can afford good lawyers for both of you. You gain plus two charm and plus one boldness. Are you ready to go to the monster motherfucking prom? You're first. First? Well, first of all, it doesn't matter who you choose for me, because it ain't going to work. You want to go alone? <laughs> Nobody wants to go with me, so There you go. Do... Pick it. You no, pick I, it. You pick, because nobody wants to go with you. We got a lemon, and I don't. I think we failed the lemon. Maybe we matter. got Zoe. Let's nobody go Zoe. Nobody wants to take with me. We'll go Zoe. No one wants to go. Zoe in! Alright, Zoe's going. And I'm going to ask Vera. Hi. Let's do this! Okay. Hi, my name is <laughs> You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with yes. you. That's you. Ashley! Finish it. Oh, no, it's not possible for us to go together in this timeline. You see, this is the alternative universe where I get to have fun at prom, which I highly suspect won't be possible if going with you. Hmm? It's something personal, <laughs> just you are very boring and unpleasant, but hey, you should totally call me if you happen to be in the horrible, forgettable prom AU sometimes. Zoe out! Yeah, Zoe out. <laughs> oh boy. Someone should write <laughs> a fix it of this. It all seems but you're a natural yeah. fighter, so you fought. For the right to marry your own hand, since that seemed like your last chance at finding love. Yay! Let's go! Well, you married your hand. You finally pluck up the courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. 
prom together. I mean, I don't want nonsense to interfere with my skyrocketing career, but what success if you can't enjoy yourself from time to time, right? And you're not that bad, I must admit. <laughs> okay, it's settled. You will help me enjoy myself. Mm. Don't read too much into that. We can discuss the details later. See you then. You might be a promising investment. Oh. At one point, Prom was raided by the police. They were looking for Vera, probably on account of one of her many crimes against humanity. But you were two steps ahead. By that time, you were flying to Madagascar, sharing a glass of wine. You might now be her partner in crime, but you also turned Prom Night into a trip together, so it was worth it. Alright, let's see what we got this time. We got eight new events, eleven new outcomes. There's so many in this game, and no new secret endings, but that's okay. Alright guys, we're ending up this game. I hope you enjoyed. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendships, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. Due to the obscene amount of uh, amount of fan art she drew, Zoe was taken by Jim Davis, renowned creator of Garfield, as his protege. Nowadays, Garfield still hates Mondays and loves lasagna, but you can bet he's into lots of weird stuff, too. Vera built the Oberlin Empire to, into endless greatness. They own a shameless number of companies. It's known that they're also into a lot of sketchy business, says. But no one does anything about it. I mean, who the hell would try to stop Vera Oberlin? Calculuster went to the Robo University and majored in mecha robotics. He's now 250 feet tall and fights against weird giant creatures protecting Tokyo 3. For those three weeks, the Monster Prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in that war called Youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Thank you guys. We're gonna go through this little ending so you guys can enjoy it. And I hope you enjoyed. If you have any ideas that you would like for us to do or read or you want to see more, feel free to just follow.